everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to be here on another Sabbath day. Help, may God help us to truly rejoice in him, knowing that this is a special privilege that we all have at this time. Let us kneel for our prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your wonderful name. We give you thanks and praise for our life, for our health, strength, and energy to be in your courts today, and uh, for being able to freely worship according to the dictates of our consciences. Grant that we would truly recognize this as a high privilege, for though we preach that this privilege will soon be taken away, many a time we still do not live as though we appreciate this privilege. May your Holy Spirit work to bring conviction to all of us, make us truly serious and earnest and genuine in our worship to you. And may that worship not just include that that has to do with the soul, but also the body. Because you've given, you've given us bodies to be taken care of. For as the word says, our bodies are the temples of the living God. And therefore, if our bodies are your temple, help us to treat them as such. And uh, thank you for the the blessings that we have at this time. So bless us, give wisdom and inspiration to continue the Christian pathway in terms of growing in character and also in the health that you've bestowed us with. So direct this and all the other aspects of the evening service at this time, for Jesus' sake. I'm continuing a bit of a report concerning the medical missionary course that we were on. Well, it's not fully finished. It's just a session or two left. But there's much to be learned as we live in these last days. And we need to earnestly recognize that when the word says that the, the herbs were given for the service of man, and uh, that is written in Psalm 104, and that the leaves, the fruit of the trees are for food and the leaves are for healing, I think that more than ever in these last days, we need to understand and know how we can use them in such ways. I want to go straight to a quotation in Ministry of Healing. These words we would have read so much before, but we would not have taken them as seriously as we ought. So I just want to read a bit of that quotation and then give you all a short experience of what happened even while we were there on the course to show the truthfulness of what the word says. Now, Ministry of Healing, page 128, part of it says, we cannot be too often reminded that health does not depend on chance. It doesn't depend on chance. It is a result of obedience to law. And therefore, we can easily conclude from this that many a time when things go wrong, it is because of something we do not, we have not been practicing in terms of our physical health. And the example is given here by the inspired writer of athletes. She says here, this is recognized by the contestants in athletic games and trials of strength. These men make the most careful preparation 
They submit to thorough training and strict discipline. Every physical habit is carefully regulated. They know that neglect, excess, or carelessness, which weakens or cripples any organ or function of the body, would ensure defeat. And I wish we would think of it in this way as well for ourselves, our defeat not being defeat in a race, a physical race, but our defeat in terms of the warfare we are holding against the enemy, the evil one. If we would recognize that even disobeying the laws, the physical laws of health could be a stepping stone to our being defeated in the fight of life for Christ's sake, I think we will take the physical laws more seriously. And we need to. And, it, and the, the point of it is that we've been so much enlightened concerning health from the writings which we have, and yet we allow people in the world who many of them may have discovered by trial and error or from history and such like, and some of them who do not even believe in God, and are coming to the conclusions that the vegan diet and rest and so on are so important for our health. I think they put some of us to shame. We've, we've grown up in a world where we are accustomed to, to, the, to the things happening in an instant. So that if we are ill and we do not get a remedy that can instantly heal us, we think it's not working. It is not so with the natural remedies. It doesn't, they do not heal in an instant. The fact is that when something goes wrong, it would have taken a while in coming to that point of making us ill, and yet we want instant healing. It isn't like that. But as this quote also says on page 128, the use of natural remedies requires an amount of care and effort that many are not willing to give because we've accustomed ourselves to taking a pill and in a few hours we feel better. And, we are th uh, and as she's bringing up here, we do not want to make the effort using nature's remedies. Nature's process of healing and upbuilding is gradual, and to the impatient, it seems slow. The surrender of hurtful indulgences requires sacrifice, but in the end, it will be found that nature, untrammeled, does her work wisely and well. Those who persevere in obedience to her laws will reap the reward in health of body and health of mind. So when we are enlightened concerning a particular area that we may be suffering from and some um, remedy that could work, we should not look for healing in an instant, but we must pray earnestly and be patient. Too little attention is generally given to the preservation of health, and we only pay attention to the preservation of health when what happens? When we get sick. That's when we suddenly realize we should have been taking better care of our health. It is far better to prevent disease than to know how to treat it when contracted. And listen carefully, it is the duty of every person, not every leader, not every elder, not every doctor. It is the duty of every person for his own sake and for the sake of humanity to inform himself in regard to the laws of life and conscientiously to obey them. All need to become acquainted with that most wonderful of all organisms, the human body. They should understand the functions of the various organs and the dependence of one upon another for the healthy action of all. 
They shall study the influence of the mind upon the body and of the body upon the mind and the laws by which they are governed. Now at this course, our theme song was taken from Proverbs where it says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth up the bones. In other words, the health starts where? Can't hear you. In the, can't hear you. In the mind. I'm accustomed to teaching children who answer me, and I think adults should answer better. Anyway, right, in the mind. That is why one is of the greatest emphasis was on prayer and faith in God. When you are about to try some natural remedy or other, you may be told it worked with this body, the next or the third. You should always start with prayer, and therefore, in your mind, little children, hello, excuse me. Thank you. Right. When you pray, believe that God will answer. Believe he will work according to his word. And you do your part while believing in him. So that starts in the mind. Now just to finish off the few minutes that I would have had, right there at the course, we got a whole set of, you can call them recipes for various ailments. Now, on the last Sabbath of last month, January, we had an open air session in Orange Hill. And a few people looked out, one or two came out. And I noticed a lady who came. And uh, I spoke to her, I said, hi, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you really? She told me she's good all to her knee. Now, lots of people suffer with joint pains. And uh, she, she was one, suffering with joint pains. She had knee pain, and with that, she held up her dress a little bit, and she actually showed me the knee. And the knee was swollen. And uh, although she was dark, you could almost see the red coming through. And she said, with all due respect to our great brother Douglin, Dr. Douglin, she said the medication wasn't working. And uh, we had been given a recipe for joints. Simple the garlic. I remember a few years ago, doctor, I think it was Dr. Greenish stood up here and talked about all the benefits of garlic. Anyway, this recipe included mainly the garlic with a little oil because we know garlic is, can be quite harsh. And we were told on the course when you crush the garlic and you apply it to these swollen inflamed joints, it helps. It draws out the fluid. So I told her about it. The bad part about it is that I told her I learned this on this course at Breath of Life Church, and I just want to share it with her. The bad thing is that she said, you are on that course? I said, yes. She said, but I'm on that course too. <laughs> She said, you never saw me? I said, no. I said, you never saw me? She said, no. Anyway, I shared it with her. Apparently, she could not attend for a couple of days, so she would have missed that one because of the same knee. So I gave her the recipe with the garlic and the oil and so on. She said she would try it that very night, which would have been the Saturday night of our open air. So she went home and she tried this she hopped home, she couldn't really walk very well. She tried it, and then we, she, she tried it. I found out that the next day because the course continued the Sunday. She actually came the Sunday, 
came in hopping the same way. I said, um, did you try the garlic? She said, yes, and look at my knee. When I looked at it, the, it did, the, the garlic did draw out the fluid, but how it drew it out was that it ended up being like blisters filled with the fluid. And uh, when she showed it to Brother Wilson, he said, all that is needed now is a sterilized needle to punch the blisters to let out the fluid. So they attended to that. And during that morning session while we were at the course, she was constantly mopping up all this fluid that kept coming out. And about, you could say, two hours time, she said the pain had considerably con um, decreased. Now, all of us know that if you get a burn or something and the blisters burst, the next thing you need to do is to do something. If not, infection can set in. Well, the advice was a mixture of honey and uh, turmeric to be applied to save that, um, those open wounds then from infection. Anyway, by the end of that Sunday's course, she was walking just about normal. She said she had almost no pain. Just this week, she took a picture of that knee and showed us on the chat. There were barely scars where that had been. And she said no pain at all. And it was just about healed, just for the scars now to return, the skin to return to the normal color. And she was just praising God all the time for that. And uh, to me, it sh I was happy for that because hearing everything is good, but to have actually seen something work was even better. And uh, we are called to help people in these areas because it opens their mind then to other areas in which we can help them. And so we are looking forward to sharing some of the other aspects of these, of these lectures that we would have received with you because more and more we are hearing that the medicines and such like we are getting the pharmaceutical companies concentrate a lot on money making, and therefore we need to get back to those natural things that God would have provided. So hopefully from time to time, as time is permitted, we will share with you, not just telling you use this and use that, but they are given in specific quantities to be used and under what conditions. So I thank you for listening, and I want you to have hope in this dying world because God always has his answers. Yes, please. Why the garlic blister her foot? Is it that she makes it wrong? or that is supposed to happen? You mean what the blisters came out? Yes. It, 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 it isn't that it blistered her, it drew the fluid out of the knee. It pulled the fluid out of the knee. So that's how it came out. The fluid that was in there causing pain, it pulled it out, yes. Yes, good evening. Maybe good evening. she had fluid in her knees. Pardon? Maybe she had fluid in her knees. But there are many there are problems, many problems that cause joint pains. For instance, if the ligament is moving away, would mm -hmm. you use, would apply the same garlic? Good question. Something we would have to look into. Yes, yeah, she had fluid in her knee. That was that would have been listen, that would have been her diagnosis from her doctor. Oh, that is another thing. You don't stop going to a doctor to try natural things. 
You keep close to your doctor, even if you are trying natural things. That is the advice given. Do not stop to do that. You keep with, at the doctor. If something is wrong with you, you go and get your test and all of that done because you, you will still need to know what you are dealing with. Okay? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, we are about to begin our quiz. So I prayed, I'm asking 